This is an introduction to relief printmaking. We'll start with a relief carving. We're going to use vinyl as our plate surface. The first step is to trace your drawing with charcoal pencil. This will allow you to transfer the drawing onto the um, carving surface. So trace all the most important information and then flip it over. Rub the back with a bone folder and um, with enough pressure, you'll get your drawing to transfer. You can always check it. If, any, if you missed anything, replace the drawing and add more. The next step is to start tracing over that charcoal layer with Sharpie. That gives you a really stable line drawing that can't be smeared away with your hand as you're working. These are the flex cut carving tools. They each come with a handle. It has a slit where you can slide these tools in. They each have at least three cutters. One is a fine point. Uh, one is usually a bit wider and deeper and there's always a V point. So these are also referred to as gouges and um, they're interchangeable, so you, each one of them fits into the handle. Now you can hold the handle this way with the dip facing up, but if it's more comfortable, you can also hold it this way with it fading, facing down. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna start by outlining with my fine point, but before I do, I'm gonna sharpen it. These tools work really well as long as they're kept sharp. So they all come with this wooden um, carving tool, which has these different profiles. You can see them right here. They have different shapes for the different tools that fit on them. This is a little bit of honing soap, which you add to the wood block to make it a bit easier for the tool to slide around. So we're gonna get this going here. Okay, and now since I'm gonna sharp, sharpen this really fine tool, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm going to drag it along the smallest profile in the block. So I'm gonna go backwards. And then I'm gonna flip it over so the open side is up and I'm gonna go in this valley right next to that um, pointed or mountain groove. So I'm getting the tool sharpened from both sides. And I'm trying to hold it at a 45 degree angle, which is something like that. You do wanna be able to sharpen your tools a couple of times while you're carving. Anytime the carving gets slow, stop and sharpen them again. Each of the carving sets comes with this awesome flex cut um, guide. So it really goes over everything I just mentioned in the video in more detail, talks about uh, the proper way to go in and sharpen each of the tools talks about safety. One of the most important things is to keep your hands out of the way. If you use a bench hook, um, as we have in the shop, it's much easier to stay safe while you're carving. So please review the safety guidelines inside of your kit before you begin. So here's my carving bench. I'm going to use it to keep myself safe. The best way to carve is to work away from yourself and this bench allows you to turn the material and carve so that you don't end up carving into your hand. You can easily slip on this material. You always want to make sure you're carving away from yourself. So let's start by carving um, an outline for the image. Okay, so whether you're using wood, vinyl, or lino, and this is mounted lino on a block, 
um, there's a good way to approach each material, which is always to test it out before you begin. So carving is always about removing the negative space. So if I want to print this circle, I need to remove the things around the circle. Whatever I leave behind in a relief carving is what I'm gonna end up printing. So when I'm working on leaving a shape behind, the best approach is to start by outlining around that shape. What that does is it allows me, just like you would with a contour drawing, it allows you to draw the outer edge of the shape with the carving tool. You can see when you're doing a circle that it's really important to keep moving and rotating the material rather than moving your hands around. So after you've carved um, the edge, you can always carve away from it. And you may at that point wanna switch to a more efficient carving tool. So see how I can move away from the shape rather than toward it. If I'm moving toward it, I'm much more likely to make a scratch into the shape that I'm trying to preserve. So keep that in mind as you're working, that um, outlining first and then moving away from the shapes that you want to preserve. If you're working with wood and you can move with the grain of the wood, that will make your carving easier as well. But most of these tools are sturdy enough that they can go cross grain, which is this direction. This is with the grain, that's against the grain. And you can see the grain running through the wood. You can hear the carving gets louder when I'm moving across the grain. Now, vinyl and linoleum don't have a grain, so you can really carve in any direction with the same amount of effort. Once I've carved away from the edge of shape, I can go back and clean the edge up again. Taking a very close look at that raised edge. So if you slip and you accidentally make a mark inside of the form that you're trying to preserve, there are really two ways forward. Um, you can try to incorporate it into your design. So if I slip on the circle and make a nick, maybe then I decide that there's a pattern inside of here, right? If um, I make a big line through it, you know, I may have to adjust my design. Um, if you make a mistake that just seems irreparable, there's no way around it, you can flip your block or your linoleum over and you have a second chance on the back side. But you really wanna save that op option for, you know, when things are going really wrong. Okay, so we're ready to return to the vinyl that we were carving before. Zoom in here. I'm gonna turn it slightly so I can get to the outline of this cape. 
I'm gonna go very slowly. I'm gonna make one smooth line. And then remove the material. So that's deep enough to make a mark. Um, but it's also, basically I'm going to put a moat, if you will, all the way around the image so that I can carve material away from it. And I'm gonna do that for every section. I'm going to go on either side of the raised part that I wanna leave behind as I work. So let me turn it so I can get over here. As you work, you wanna go nice and slow and steady. Going quickly is really just gonna end up um, having you make uh, slip and make mistakes. Um, you don't have to press in very deep. You don't wanna hold your cutter at an extreme angle, just a nice 45 degree angle. And I always use my other hand to help guide my line and steady my cutter, but I always make sure that my fingers are behind the point of the tool rather than in front. So we're gonna do some more carving now. Now that it's almost fully carved, I'm ready to proof it. I'm gonna get some Caligo Safe Wash Relief Ink ready. I just pulled the first proof and I'm assessing the quality. I haven't carved the background away yet, but that's gonna be my next step. To get rid of the background, the most efficient thing to do is get a big uh, utility knife and just cut the excess away completely. First, I'm gonna circle some of the areas that I wanna correct and take my fine carving tool and go in and remove some. I've got quite a few carving marks or remnants of the process that are left behind and I'm going to clean those up. I do like to leave some of them behind um, just to show the process and leave some energy in the print. In between proofing, I suggest using some simple green to wipe your plate down um, just to make the next round of carving less messy.
Now that I've pulled a final proof that I'm happy with, I'm gonna move on to the next uh, couple of processes for relief.